everyone, and welcome to the Palm Harvest Network. I'm Mike Decker. Super glad that you're, you're tuning in today. Listen, if, if you're new to our broadcast and you're watching this on YouTube, I wanna encourage you to subscribe. Just simply hit the like button and that'll keep you informed with you know, our ongoing conversations. If you find this conversation helpful and encouraging, I wanna encourage you to maybe share it with a friend. Here's the big idea of our conversation today. If you're taking notes, write this down. And that is, God has uniquely wired you for a reason. God has uniquely wired you and he has uniquely wired me for a reason. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, before we get too much further into this conversation, I'd like to pause for a moment and, and say a prayer. You know, I find myself out here in a park called Canyon Park in Costa Mesa. And as you're going to see here in a minute, we'll, we'll give you some shots of sort of the flowers and the foliage and maybe even capture some anim animals. But anytime I'm, I'm out in nature uh, like this, this park, I find myself just wanting to kind of pause, take a deep breath, relax, and invite God in into kind of my, my rhythm of, of movement. And so wherever you might be, why don't you just take a deep breath right now. <sighs> Exhale, open your hands, open your hearts, open your mind, and join me for this opening prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this beautiful park that you've created for us to broadcast from. And God, I pray that the tranquility of this, this, this kind of agricultural area will permeate our conversation. That your peace would overflow us, that your instruction would pierce our mind and our heart. Help us, Lord, to capture what you want us to capture today. We ask in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. You know, when my wife and I were younger, and our two daughters, Gina and Casey, were still living at home with us, one of the messages that we were consistent at, at impressing upon our two girls was the very simple message, girls, you are special. God has uniquely wired you with certain gifts and certain outlooks and certain personalities. We want you to realize that that uniqueness is intended, it's purposeful, that, that you are special. You know, in fact, if, if you're a parent watching right now and maybe you have sitting on the couch next to you uh, a, grand, a, a child, a, a son or a daughter, or maybe grandparents, a grandson or granddaughter, I want to encourage you just right now to just kind of pause this, this digital broadcast. And, and in the pause, in the space, take a moment to, to remind your children that they are special and maybe as a family even discuss with each other how God has uniquely wired uh, their brother or, or their sister. You know, what makes that sibling special? What makes that sibling unique? What makes mom unique? What makes dad unique? If God has wired all of us uniquely, how are we different? Maybe you wanna just pause for a moment right now and, and have that conversation. Friends, God has wired you and he has wired me uniquely for a reason. Now, don't take my word for it. Take what the Bible says. And so if you have a Bible, whether it's in written or digital form, I encourage you to turn in it to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. You know, for the last several months now we have been working our way as a church family through the book of Romans and again we find ourselves in in Romans chapter 12 and in the verses that we're going to read today just four verses maybe five I want you to pay attention to this message that the the proverb writer or rather the Roman writer is, is saying remember Paul is writing this letter. He's drafting this letter to a group of Christians, early Christians, early followers of Jesus, who are now living in the city of Rome. And he's giving them this instruction about how to live out their faith among their community, how to live their, out their faith among both Christian and non-Christian peers. 
And one of the unique qualities of his message today is that very fact that he emphasizes that we are unique, that you are unique, and this is what he writes. So look at verse 4 and, and notice and apply this to your own life. He says, just as our bodies, our human body, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, right? Arm, leg, nose, ear, eye, all have different functions. So it is with Christ's body, which is the church. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Verse 6, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve others well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, then be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, he writes, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Church, what's the Bible writer telling us here? Basically, he's telling us and reinforcing this truth that God has uniquely wired you for a reason. And one of those reasons, point number one, is to help you or to use you or to work through you to accomplish a specific work. God has uniquely wired you and me to accomplish a specific work. You know, somewhere in the margin of your notes, I'd like you to write down this phrase. Diversity, not uniformity, is a mark of God's handiwork. Diversity, not uniformity, is a mark of God's handiwork. As I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, we are filming right now from Canyon Park here in Costa Mesa. And as you can see around me, the flowers are blooming and the bees are buzzing. And if you sit quiet enough, you might even get a glimpse of a hummingbird or two kind of flirting or flitting, I guess would be the right term, back and forth. If you look around, you can see how the flowers are colored diversely. There's colors of pink and yellow and, and red and, and green. You might even see a purple flower if you, if you wander around far enough. You know, the bees and the hummingbirds and the squirrels, you know, they, they, they boast various shades of, of brown and, and black. And then their bodies, you know, right, are even different. They're scruffy and they're fluffy and there might even be a little smooth element to sort of the texture of how God has created them. And for me, all of this reinforces this biblical idea, this biblical truth that diversity, not uniformity, is a mark of God's handiwork. You know, this park for me highlights the beautiful symbiotic relationship that exists between plants and animal. You know, the flowers produce pollen and seed, which then the feed, feed the animals, right? And as the animals move from flower to flower and from tree to tree and as they, you know, forage in the dirt and in the grass, they'll, they'll take that pollen and they'll take that seed and they'll begin to kind of spread it across the, the again, the, the turf of this, of this beautiful park. And in so doing, their activity actually begins to fertilize the area. You know, as I stand in the auditorium of this, this beautiful park setting, for me, it gives me a beautiful picture of what the church is. You know, we talk a lot around Palm Harvest that the church is not build a building. The church is not brick and mortar. Rather, the church is what? It's people, right? It's you. The church, the church is me. And what the Bible writer is, is reminding us here in this set of Bible verses is how God has uniquely wired each one of us for a reason. You know, the Apostle Paul 
in the early church was trying to remind these early Christians how God had entrusted each one of them with special abilities, right? To be used for the good of the team. You know, when I think about the Palm Harvest team, we have a lead team. Several boards that we gather together once a month for, uh, you know, for meetings and Zoom calls and whatnot. And if you look at the, the, the makeup of our Palm Harvest lead team, you'll see both men and women. You'll see people who are older than me and younger than me. You know, we don't all have the same skill set. We don't all even have the same perspective on things. Some of us are risk takers. Others of us are more uh, conservative. Some of us are dreamers. Others of us are detail oriented. You know, I've talked about this in the past, how on our, our, my staff, you know, Beto, who's, you know, our, our publicist and our social media guru, and he's the guy behind, you know, this, the camera and these broadcasts, you know, Beto is very forward looking in his, in his thinking. He's a, what we would might call a futurist. And, and full disclosure, as I might have shared before, you know, both Dave, or Beto and I have been a little bit charged up and energized by all the change that's taken place, you know, these last 15, 16 months of, of this pandemic. You know, we kind of like the ebb and flow and the ups and downs. But this last week, you know, David, who you know, who leads worship and, and helps, you know, with our small group ministry and stuff, he was reminding David, or rather Beto and I, that not everybody's energized by change. And maybe that's you. He was saying, guys, you know, not everybody in Palm Harvest Church likes the ups and downs. You know, the, many of us, and I think David was putting in himself in that camp, he was saying, we like stability. You know, we like predictability. And, and, it was, and it was just a good reminder. He was just saying, guys, you need to slow down a little bit, you know. But it was a good reminder to, to me, even as Paul was reminding us, is that we're all different and we're all unique, but we're all important. You know, one of the, the messages I'm, I'm often telling people of any group that I'm a part of is sh the words, share it. Share it. Because friends, you're gonna see things that I'm gonna miss. You're gonna feel things that, that I might not feel. And so it's important if you're a part of any kind of team, if you're a part of any kind of staff or workplace community or not just the church, it's important for you and it's important for me to, to kind of share it, to, to, to be verbal with what our observations are. Because as Paul writes here, it is we all have a voice and everybody's voice is important. We all have blind spots, right? There's activity probably going on behind me that I can't see, which means I need you to kind of guard my back and maybe I need, you need me to guard your back. And it just reinforces this truth that the Apostle Paul is teaching us is that we all have a different perspective and that we all need each other. Church, God has wired you uniquely for a reason. Number one, to accomplish a specific work or task. And number two, to contribute to a kingdom objective. To contribute to a kingdom objective. When Jesus was here on the earth, you know, he was asked the question, you know, you know this conversation, right? He said, hey, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And how did Jesus respond? He said, love God, Right? Love your Creator, love the Heavenly Father with all your whole heart, your strength, your mind, you know, your everything you have. And he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Love God and, and love others. Later on in Jesus' ministry, he, 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 he was reminding his disciples, his followers, he said, going, hey guys, hey gals, I just want to remind you that all authority has been given to me. And so now with this authority, I'm now giving it to you. So go and make disciples of all nations. Tell people about my love. Tell people about God the Father's desire to be in relationship with his creation. Basically, Jesus was saying to you and what he was saying to me is you are my ambassador. You are my hands and feet. That's your kingdom purpose to uniquely take your design and your wiring and your perspective and use it to, to tell, tell people about, about God's love through Jesus for, for humanity. You know, how you accomplish 
that kingdom purpose is going to be different. The way and the methodology and the style with which you share God's love with people, it's going to be different than the way I might do it. Why is that? It's because God has uniquely wired you so that you can uniquely touch people in ways that I will never get the opportunity to touch. God has uniquely wired you. He has uniquely wired me for a reason, to accomplish a specific work and to, and to really to contribute to a kingdom objective. You know, one of the things that I love about Jesus' story in the Bible is I love particularly looking at sort of the, the people who he hung out with. You know, when we look at Jesus' inner circle, his 12 disciples, we can see a group of men who, who came from all kinds of, of, of different backgrounds. You know, there were fishermen and, and tax collectors and accountants, and even Luke was a doctor. Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke, and Luke wrote uh, the book of Acts, and, and he wasn't even part of the original, the, that inner 12, and yet he was a part of Jesus' posse because Jesus understood that Luke would add a perspective and had a capacity to write in maybe a way that Peter the fisherman didn't. There were blue collar and white collar. There were tradesmen and, and, and clinical. And, and what that reinforces for you and what it reinforces for me really is that God uses all sorts to accomplish his kingdom objective. Now look again at what the Bible writer states here in, in verse 6. He said, in his grace, God has given us different gifts, right? Different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, to teach, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If it's to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's to give, then give generously, he writes. If your ability is leadership, make sure you hone those leadership skills. Make sure you try to sharpen your sword, so to speak, and take that responsibility seriously. He says, if your gift is the gift of kindness, showing people kindness, then do so, do so gladly. Friends, I want to, I hope you're doing this already, but if not, I want to encourage you to take a moment today and, and, and maybe this week to think about specifically how has God uniquely wired you? How has God uniquely shaped you? And equally important, you know, maybe ask and answer the question, how are you using that shape to benefit the lives of, of those around you? God has uniquely wired you and has uniquely wired me or has wired you uniquely, right? For a reason. One, to accomplish a specific work. Two, to contribute to a kingdom outcome or objective, and number three, to flourish, to flourish within diverse relationships. To flourish within diverse relationships. Look again at verses four and five, and I'm gonna to start to wrap things up here. He said, just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, you are special, so it is with Christ's body, the church. We are one, we are many parts of one body, and we all belong to one another. So write this down in the margin of your notes. Many parts, one body. Many parts, one body. as a church and really as a world we are coming out of this pandemic and one of the sort of the patterns that has evolved through our learning you know experience is we've now adopted this new schedule which last week we just began to kind of promote which is on campus on campus off campus on your couch which what you're doing today right on campus on campus off campus on your couch. 
Well, last week uh, in the Palm Harvest Rhythm was an off-campus experience. And one of the things that we have learned to enjoy and really relish in the last five or six or seven months is our off-campus brunch experience, which really is a beautiful picture, I think, of the early church, where we're meeting in someone's home, we're, we're practicing uh, you know, you're only the gift of, of hospitality, and if you were around last uh, weekend, you'll remember how many of us gathered in the home of Rick and Nancy Capco, who live here in, in Costa Mesa. You know, they opened up their home for us to enjoy. And those of you who, who attended, you know, you brought breakfast food to share. And there was, again, many parts, one body, and there was foods of, of every kind of, of, you know, palate that you could, you could possibly hope for. You know, there was bacon, and there was pastries, and there was fruit. Um, someone even brought some beef smoked uh, ribs and, and some baked beans, which, which was delightful. Um, you know, there were egg casseroles that we enjoyed, you know, with spinach and, and you know, just all kinds of, of things that would make your tummy and your palate happy. There was coffee and juice and, and water. And, you know, it, it, it was just a wonderful time of, of, of fellowship uh, as the church family. You know, Rick and one of the things I noticed is that Rick and Nancy, they pulled out this big kind of this plastic tub of toys toys back from when I was uh, you know a, a kid and and certainly when my daughters uh, were kids and so they brought the toys and and catch this it was the parents who brought the kids no kids or no toys no no uh, you know nothing for the kids to play with but but no, no kids, then there's no use of toys. Again, there's this, this symbiotic relationship, this symbiotic activity. David, you, you'll remember, and Beto led us during uh, a time of, of singing and, and worship. And I shared a few words, and then we broke up into small groups, and, and we, we, we just shared you know, in conversation sort of what we were thankful for. Or maybe we thought about what was our, you know, our, our takeaways from the scripture passages that we read. But again, just talking about specifically things that we were, were grateful for. You know, some people sat inside, others sat outside, some sat around tables, others lounged out on, on patio couches. You know, some, some, you know, sat on the brick wall, others sat on a stool. And, and on all of these, these sort of these images, if you will, and these differences, at least for me, paint this beautiful picture of what the church is. And what the Apostle Paul is writing here in, in the book of Romans is he's reminding us is that our diversity creates this flourishing, life-giving experience. Next Sunday, in the month of, of our calendar, in May, it's a fifth Sunday. And so on this fifth Sunday of May, we are going to have a baptism service, an outdoor baptism service. And five people have decided that they want to go public, if you will, with declaring that Jesus Christ has saved their sins and they've invited him to be the, the Lord of their life. It's a, it's a big spiritual decision that these individuals are making and declaring. And, and I, I share that with you to say that they need you. And they want you to be a part of, of this baptismal con uh, conversation, if you will. Because, friends, you can help make their day special. So when you think about your unique contribution, how might you contribute to this baptism experience? Well, Jim and Karen Santanello have decided they have this beautiful home that's on the Mesa Verde Country uh, Club golf course. And they said, Mike, we have this, we have this great outdoor space and this, this uh, nice pool that you could use for, for you know, dunking the people, for, for giving them an opportunity to, to be baptized. You know, and so they've got this beautiful glass home with, with outdoor patio space. It's got this nice uh, kind of this barbecue area where we're gonna lay out a nice spread and you can, you can meet in the front, you can meet on the back patio that sits right on the golf course. Again, Jim and Karen are just bringing sort of their, offering their home to, to be a part of this, the decision that these baptismal candidates are making. 
So let's have a quick show of hands. How many of you would agree with me that food makes party celebrations better? Yes, All, everybody's in agreement. This is a big deal, this baptismal service. And so I reached out to Millie and I said, Millie, what do you say we put out a spread of breakfast burritos? Because we all agree that food makes party celebrations better. Better, I said, do you know of anybody that, that might you know, offer some good burritos? I reached out to, to Brooke. I said, Brooke, same thing. Do you know of anybody who, who offers some good breakfast burritos? And so we collaborated and we, we landed on a, a new couple, a friend who, who have just started this, this business here in Costa Mesa. He's a chef, he, he, he got downsized, if you will, from Disneyland and so now in, a, in, a, in an effort to support them and, and in their effort to support sort of the, the, the you know the, the decision of these individuals being baptized they're providing us with with breakfast burritos and we'll have fruit and coffee and it'll be a great spread for all of us to enjoy but I share that to say is because because maybe some of you want to sponsor that breakfast burrito spread. You know, maybe you want to take out your your Palm Harvest app and and make a cash donation to say, yeah, you know what? I'd like to I'd like to help out with that meal. That can be my part in this mini part one body experience. You know, God wants us to grow, friends. God wants us to mature. God wants us to live a fruitful life and make spiritual decisions like these five individuals are making. But here's the catch. We all need each other. And we all need one another's unique contribution. Don't ever underestimate the value. Listen to me on this. Don't ever underestimate the value that you bring to situations. You know, your simple attendance, by the way, at this baptismal service, your presence, it's a big deal. You know, one of the things that these, these candidates are gonna do is that when they're in the water, they're gonna talk about, you know, what led them to their decision to be baptized. They're gonna share about their faith in Jesus. And, and then when, you know, when they sort of make this public declaration, as we dunk them, you know, under the water, symbolic of Jesus' death and resurrection from the grave. That's our opportunity, all of us, regardless of our skill set, to scream and to snort and to, to, to make noise and to holler and to affirm, basically, the decision that these individuals are making. Even something as simple as that can add value to our community, to our community gathering, make it so memorable. Maybe some of you for this baptismal event say, you know what, I'd like to be a greeter. I'd like to help people feel welcome. One of the, one of the uh, per persons getting baptized is Mackenzie. Many of you know Mackenzie. She's a senior at Estancia High School. She's a cheerleader and she's deciding she wants to be, to be baptized. But here's what's really uh, funny, if you will, about her decision. Her dad's also being baptized. And when one of Mackenzie's friends heard that Sean was getting baptized, she said, I want to come and see that. Because if you know Sean, he's this big guy. I mean, it's going to be like Shamu at the Splash Zone in SeaWorld. He's going to just, there's going to be water displaced. And it's going to be exciting. And so I won't be surprised at all to see Mackenzie if many of her cheerleader friends from Estancia High School will come to support not only her decision, but the decision of, of Mackenzie's dad. Maybe your job on this day, this Baptism Sunday, will be to simply make these, these girls feel welcome, to make them find a place to support, sort of feel like they're, they're at home. We all have roles to fulfill, and that's what Romans 12, that's what the Bible is teaching us here. Listen, as I, I start to close this conversation, again, let me reinforce what the Apostle Paul is reinforcing, is that your activity is important. My activity is important and together we are a team. Diversity, not uniformity, is a mark of God's handiwork. You know, when Jesus was getting to the end of his earthly ministry before going to the cross, we can read how in John chapter 17, he, he prayed this prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And part of his prayer, it was a long prayer that Jesus had, but part of his prayer was to say, God, Father, you know, he says, you and I are one. And he said, my prayer is that in the same way that you and I are one, is that you will help the church be one. 
You know, that, that you would help them to come together even as, as, as you and I are, 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 are on the same kind of page. And, and Jesus, you know, prayed. He said, God, I'm, I'm, Father, I'm, I'm sending these people out into the world, right? I'm sending them out so that, and so as they gather together, God, I pray that you would just pour out upon them your blessing and your favor and your help to allow them to make a difference in this world. Friends, our diversity with all of our different skill sets and perspectives, when we come together and we work together and we pull in the same direction, it's an amazing thing that honors God. Church, God has wired you and he has wired me uniquely for a reason, to accomplish a specific work, right? To, to contribute to a kingdom objective and to flourish within our diverse relationships. You know, in closing, my, my challenge to you today and really my challenge even to myself is approach every day with the understanding that you are special, that God loves you and that he is for you and he is with you and wants to help you live out your uniqueness in the world around you. Don't ever underestimate the value that just your simple presence and your smile and your greeting can have upon a person's life. So I hope I'll see many of you next Sunday for our baptism service. You know, over the last year and a half, many of us have been hunkering down and for good reason. That being said, I think it's time for, for us to kind of start to break out. It's time for us to leave the security of our homes because that's where the devil, like he wants us to stay all huddled up in fear and worried about what may happen. Friends, God is with you and he wants to use you to touch the lives of those around you. So don't let fear hold you hostage. Don't let the devil keep you down. Our world needs you. The Palm Harvest Church family needs you. And I, and I certainly need you. So let's close this uh, conversation together, shall we, with a final word of prayer. So join me for a closing prayer. Put your hands open if you feel comfortable doing so. Heart open, mind open. Pray this prayer in your heart. Prayer of gratitude to God. Just say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the way you have uniquely wired me. God, thank you for the way you have uniquely shaped me. And today I offer to you me. Today I offer to you, God, me. And I pray that you will use me with my unique quirkiness, with my unique perspective, with my unique likes and dislikes. God, I just offer all of that to you. And I pray a spirit, with the spirit of, of thankfulness, expecting that you can use that stuff, that unique stuff, to positively impact the lives of people around me. Lord, use me this week to bring hope into hopeless situations. God, use me this week in my uniqueness to bring light into dark corners. God, I offer you myself. I offer you my talents. I offer you my perspective. I offer you me. Please use me for your glory. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You know, I'm, I'm super glad that you've tuned in today. You know, maybe you've been sparked with an idea in terms of what your next step might be. Maybe some of you tuning in have never been baptized. And if you'd like to learn more about baptism, I encourage you to, you know, grab your Palm Harvest app and, and use that to maybe just send me a note to let me know, you know, what's going on. And I'll be certain to answer your questions. 
If you'd like to, to you know, give financially, again, this is, this is a resource that you can use to do that, to, to worship the Lord through, through giving. And, and I assure you, you know, we're going to use that, those, those monies, if you will, to, to try to invest in people's spiritual transitions, much like this upcoming baptismal service next week. So thanks again for tuning in. If you found this conversation helpful, again, I encourage you to share it with somebody. Uh, Palm Harvest, I need you. And I'm grateful that you're a part of my life. I'll see you next week. Lord, oh my soul, all that's within me, bless this holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless this holy name.
Caribe, para Cristo Guadalajara, para Cristo Guadalajara, para Cristo South Dakota, para Cristo South Dakota, para Cristo Santa Ana, para Cristo Santa Ana, para Cristo Palm Harvest, para Cristo Palm Harvest, para Cristo. Oh, good times.